It is 305 on Talk Radio 790 KABC, the Larry Elder Show with me, John Phillips, sitting in for the Sage. I'll be with you again tomorrow from 3 to 6 and in my normal time slot from 9 to 10 in the AM. The Sage will be back with you on Friday. And he's got a big interview planned with Pat Buchanan. He just got sacked from MSNBC. So make sure you tune in to The Sage on Friday for that big interview. Johnny Don't Like, if you'd like to follow me on the Twitter. Johnny Don't Like. A very busy news day. In fact, there's so much news, couldn't fit it all into the 9 o'clock show. So thankfully, we have three hours this afternoon to go through all of it. Let's begin with topic A of the day. This comes to us courtesy of the Orange County Register. Kelly Thomas, who many of you may be familiar with, is the transient who got into a run-in with the cops some time ago, and it resulted in his death. The cops are now on trial. They're being charged with the death of Kelly Thomas. And there's been a lot of investigations. A lot of different agencies are investigating a lot of different, uh, from a lot of different levels where they're taking a look into this thing, where they're making sure that all the procedures were done the right way and making sure that nobody's civil rights were violated, making sure that the criminal activities that did or did not take place would, will result in, in criminal charges being filed, which they are. And there's also, in this case, I believe a very important part of the story uh, that hasn't been talked a lot about on the radio. And that's the media bias. And you hear a lot about media bias on the radio, whether it be uh, for one particular candidate or another. Or I know in sports talk radio, they talk a lot about bias because there's an East Coast bias. If the Lakers are up to something, unless Kobe Bryant uh, is accused of raping some woman in Colorado, they don't care. We can absolutely drop dead. Well, in this case, there's been a lot of bias, and it's all been going one way. It's been going one way against the city of Fullerton, against the police department. And I'm not saying there, there wasn't anything that was wrong that happened here. I, I don't know. We have to wait for the criminal trial to take place. And the jury will determine whether or not the cops did anything wrong that resulted in the death of this guy, Kelly Thomas. But when I look at a case like this, I look at it as a messy situation. When you've got force, when you've got police officers and you've got someone who's being detained or someone who's being arrested and you have a wrestling match that goes on and you have somebody who gets injured or somebody who gets killed, it's a messy process to figure out just exactly what happened, how it happened, which blows were delivered when, where, and which blows caused the person to die. That's messy. So when I look at something like this, I look for what I call checkable facts. That's where you start from. What can you absolutely verify? What do you know happened? What is an absolute fact? It's not an opinion, not something that you think happened, but something that actually happened. Because we all have our own opinions, but we don't all get our own facts. We have to use the same facts as everyone else. Well, there was a report that was uh, concluded. It was done by a guy by the name of Michael Janako who's an independent investigator. He's been taking a look at this. Here's what he found. Kelly Thomas's backpack had an attorney's mail, a passport that wasn't his, and other items the night of a police confrontation that left him severely injured. This report done by Janako uh, was then brought before the city council. The council was told that there was no evidence of intent by the police department to deceive or falsify after last summer's incident at a downtown transit center. Let me repeat that one more time. The Fullerton Police Department showed no evidence of intent by the department to deceive or falsify. In English, that means the Fullerton Police Department told the truth. That means that when uh, Andrew Goodrich, who's a spokesman for the Fullerton PD, gave interviews to the press... He said what actually happened. He was dealing with facts. And that's important when you're looking at a case like this. Janako, chief attorney for the Los Angeles Office of Independent Review, has been looking into the details of the July 5th incident between Fullerton Police and Thomas, a mentally ill homeless man. Thomas died five days later 
The DA's office has charged Officer Manuel Ramos with second-degree murder and involuntary manslaughter and Corporal Jay Cicinelli with involuntary manslaughter and excessive force. Cicinelli's stepfather, by the way, is going to be here in just a few minutes, so make sure you stick around for that. Prosecutors say Thomas was beaten and suffocated. The two officers have pleaded not guilty. The city hired Janaco, who's the independent investigator, back in August. More than 100 members of the public and several television cameras packed the council chambers as Janaco delivered his first of three reports. He focused on several items that seemed to be in contention after Thomas' death, whether police were actually called to the transit center, whether a 2009 booking photo distributed of Thomas actually depicted Thomas, and what was found in the backpack in Thomas' possession when police stopped him. As the media began to focus more and more on the case after Thomas' death, Fullerton Police released a 2009 mugshot taken of Thomas after a trespassing arrest. His father had said it was not his son in the photo, as the picture was of a menacing and older man. On Tuesday, he acknowledged after hearing evidence that it was indeed his son, Kelly Thomas. So what Ron Thomas, the father, was saying was not true. He was not dealing with facts. Ron Thomas... Not telling the truth. Fullerton PD, telling the truth. And I need to add something else here, too. The father who's been doing the media rounds, who's been on, was on Doug McIntyre's show this morning, was on with Peter Tilden last night, he's on all the, the television uh, stations, uh, was on all these programs. And one of the questions that I would ask him, if he was on this show, is how did you not recognize your son? How long has it been since you've seen your son? If, if somebody held a photograph of me to my parents, I think they'd be able to identify me. So you either haven't seen him in a very long time, or you purposely were trying to present evidence to the public that you knew was not true. One of those two things happened. Either way, Fullerton PD telling the truth, Ron Thomas not telling the truth. This is coming from... The independent investigator, Michael Janako. Janako said independently researched records and fingerprints connected Thomas's 2009 arrest with that photo. Family could have been brought into the discussion before that booking photo was released, Janako said. However, he added, there's no current written policy at Fullerton regarding this issue. The photo was also the most recent booking photo of Kelly Thomas. If the Orange County Register puts in a Freedom of Information request asking for a photo, I think the Fullerton Police Department should release the most current one because that's what accurately depicts what he looks like. That's what they released. They weren't trying to doctor anything up. They weren't trying to slant the story. They were trying to present it as accurately as possible. Again, you may not like the facts, but those are the facts. If you look at the video, there was video of uh, Kelly Thomas. Mr. Thomas was wearing a backpack when he was approached by the officers. Audio shows that Thomas allowed the search of the backpack, and one of the officers indicated that the backpack contained an attorney's mail. That attorney had reported some mail is stolen, but it turns out the attorney had thrown away the items Thomas had in his backpack. Janako said there's no way the officers would have known that the mail had actually been discarded. The search of the backpack, Janako said, provided sufficient reason for responding officers to continue their investigation. The backpack also contained a passport and other items belonging to someone who told investigators he'd left the backpack with those items at the train station. Janako said there's no evidence that Thomas stole the back mail or the backpack. However, if he's found with mail that doesn't belong to him, and he's found with a passport that doesn't belong to him, That's property that does not belong to him that he's found with. Uh, You can say he stole it or he didn't sell it, uh, steal it, but if you're you're found with property that doesn't belong to you, I think the officers should be asking questions. I think at a bare minimum, that should happen. Lastly, Janako said that there are dispatcher recordings of a woman's phone call asking police to respond to the transit center and that she'd seen a man wandering in the parking lot trying to open car doors. She identified the man by name as Kelly. If you listen to the mob down in Fullerton, the mob will tell you that the police department lied, that the police department made up this phone call, that this phone call never existed, that they were searching the the bus depot looking for random homeless people to just beat the living hell out of. Not true. 
What Kelly's mob said, not true. What the Fullerton PD said, true. What the report found was that everything that the police department said in regard to the call was substantiated by facts. This does not look good for Ron Thomas or Kelly's mob. These are the facts of the case. And I urge all of you out there, I know there's been a lot of slanting in the reporting. I know there's a lot of people. And look, this is what happens. In the media, when you're doing a story like this, there are what we call sympathetic figures. There are people who are related to someone who have horrible things happen to them. People who die as a result of a confrontation with the police. People who are Ron Goldman. Remember him? He was the father of, of, uh, of uh, what's his name, uh, the Goldman uh, that was killed with Nicole Simpson. Ron Goldman was the son. No, Ron Goldman was the father. Fred Goldman was the father. Ron Goldman was the one that was killed. Thank you. And uh, he's a sympathetic figure. So when there's a sympathetic figure, nobody wants to attack them. Nobody wants to uh, say that what they're saying is not true, even if they, what they're saying is factually incorrect. You just don't want to do it. The L.A. City Council, which is as left-wing as you can possibly get, didn't want to go after the Shaw family after Jamil Shaw uh, Jr. Was, was gunned down by an Ill- illegal alien gang member. They just didn't want to attack them. Even though they disagree with them politically on everything, they don't want to attack them because they're a sympathetic figure and they're afraid that the public will turn against them if they're seen as attacking someone who's sympathetic. And Ron Thomas has been getting a pass. He's been getting a pass by the media. And I'm talking about the L.A. Times. I'm talking about the O.C. Register. And I'm talking about talk radio. And I'm talking about O.C. Weekly, too. He's been getting a pass from all of them, where he's been able to say things that are just patently not true. Well, today we now know because of the report that what he's been saying is not true. When we return, we're going to talk to a gentleman by the name of John Hulsman, who's the stepfather of Fullerton police officer Jay Cicinelli. Do not go anywhere. This is the Larry Elder Show with me, John Phillips. Talk Radio 790 KBC. It's John Phillips in for Larry Elder. 800-222-5222 is my telephone number. Johnny Don't Like on the Twitter. Johnny Don't Like. Right now, I'd like to welcome to the program a gentleman by the name of John Hulsman, who's the stepfather of Fullerton Police Officer Jay Cicinelli. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Phillips. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Well, um, this, this report is now in, and it looks like, uh, as, in terms of checkable facts associated with what happened that night, the Fullerton Police Department is telling the truth. Yes, sir, they were. Um, and it's unfortunate what you elaborated on uh, before I came on about the press and checking facts. Uh, we as a family have been instructed not to communicate in any way regarding the incident, obviously for attorney reasons, so we, uh, we were asked not to. And we've, we've, we've had to sit and listen to what we know to believe, know to, we believe and we know what were not factual situations. And uh, so now, um, as of last night, uh, you know, hearing some of the comments in person, because I've avoided the uh, hearings or the council meetings, but I heard firsthand an attack on my son, uh, his mental capacity, and uh, I just had to speak out. Well, they just change on a dime, too, because after months and months and months of saying, that's not him, that's not him, that photograph is not him, now they're saying, well, he looked awful, why'd you pick that? You picked that to purposely muddy the water so it makes him look awful. Well, you can't have it both ways, and they turn just on a dime uh, without retracting uh, the lies that they've been spreading for months. Well, I, I would... Uh, you'll forgive me, Mr. Phillips, but I don't want to—I I, I don't wish to impugn Mr. Thomas's credibility or anything of that nature. Uh, that's uh, obviously for the press, and and I, I, as a father, can empathize with his loss, uh, regardless of his uh, verbalization of it. I—I uh, I, I would choose just to strictly to defend my son uh, and his integrity and so forth, and let let the process go through and not get into a situation where I'm commenting on whether he's truthful or not. Well, um, besides him, the, the, there's a mob there, and I, I would refer to it as a mob, because whenever you've got a situation where you've got a bunch of people, and I've had callers that call in on my show, and I was arguing with them about this, where facts just do not matter. I mean, they will literally tell you in black and white they're not interested in the facts, and they've been whipped into a frenzy, 
And I, that's something when you got a trial that's going on where you have people's lives on the line, you have their careers on the line, you have their names on the line. One of the things that I think that we have to do in a circumstance like this is we have to look at the checkable facts. You have to stick with what's in black, what's in white. Does it check out or does it not check out? That's, that's what the process is for, isn't it? Yes, sir, it is. And I, I certainly concur. And again, we as a family have sat and listened to talk radio and we've listened to the blogs, uh, read the blogs, uh, just distorting uh, factual information. Uh, that supposedly was checked out, somebody was vetted, and yet what they were saying was totally not true. Uh, and it took on a life of its own, and people went with it because neither, you know, we, we, we just weren't able to speak out, and consequently, without speaking out and either refuting or giving a different version, uh, then it's difficult for us to control what is happening regarding that situation. So, uh, you know, but what you're saying is actually true. There's no question about uh, disinformation and following up with facts. But again, on our end, we were, we were told to uh, stay in reserve and just let you know, let the system go and let the system work. Well, so you got one of the have... best attorneys in the business, John Barnett, down there, who is uh, rep- is he representing your uh, son as well as Ramos? Or? Yep. No, no, he's representing Ramos. Okay. We have Mr. Schultz, so who's equally uh, on, par, on, on par with Mr. Barnett. That, that, well, yeah, they, they, uh, they work together on other cases. From how, what I understand. how difficult is it when you're sitting back, and this is something where every once in a while you'll see this happen in the media, where you see someone who just has to sit there and you can't talk. Your attorneys are telling you you can't say anything, you can't call the newspaper, you can't call into the radio shows, you can't go on television, and you have situations where the the facts of the case, and again, we're not talking about opinions, we're talking about just Mm -hmm. the black and white facts, have been misstated and repeated over and over and over again, and you can't correct the record. How upsetting is that to you when you have to just sit quiet and keep your mouth shut and turn the computer off and not respond to any of this? How difficult is it for you and your family to do that? It has been extremely emotional for Jay's mother, my wife. Uh, she's, uh, she has taken this, obviously, extremely poorly. Uh, she just laments nightly over why can't we, those kinds of things that any mother would want to speak out on behalf of her son. Uh, we are. We feel that his voice and the other officers as well. Jay is not singled out, although he has been indicted. But the other officers as well have. You know, they can't speak out. And, and it is the most frustrating thing you can experience as a father, uh, knowing what is being said is is not true or at least skewered. And then it. it if I can't describe the emotions now. Again, I'm not trying to pair myself with Ron Thomas who's lost his son. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm answering your question regarding the emotions on our end. It is extremely frustrating, and we sit across the table from each other, and, and why can't we and those kinds of things and discuss it amongst ourselves, but we know we can't go public. And so it, it's, it, it's devastating to the family. It truly is uh, from, from, from every emotional uh, avenue that you can imagine. We're talking to John Hulsman, who's the stepfather of Fullerton Police Officer Jay Cicinelli. How is Jay holding up through this entire process? Jay is is extremely mentally strong. He he has a he has a quality about him that, uh, ha- having been in the Marines and been in law enforcement for as long as he had, uh, he's learned that mental toughness that it takes to survive in that particular field. Uh, but it's devastating to him emotionally inside because he knows that he, in, in, in his view and in our view, didn't do anything wrong. He tried, you know, it, it was just one of those situations that occurred without going into detail. But not being able to, to speak is the most frustrating thing from him, for him. And uh, it, it, it's, he, he's strong. Uh, he knows what he has to do. He feels confident. All of those emotions that are outward, but I'm sure internally, uh, when he sits at home at night or has a cup of coffee and just laments, he, he, I, I'm, I'm sure it adversely affects him inside. But again, as far as his outward appearance and, and his character, 
it's strong and, and will remain strong throughout this whole process. Well, I'm sure this has been just a horrible process for you and your entire family to go through. And uh, I can only say this. I'm a graduate of Cal State Fullerton. I am from Orange County. I lived there the majority of my life. I've been a juror on trials in Orange County. And from that experience, I can tell you that people in Orange County are fair-minded people. And there's a lot of people who are going to be sitting on that jury who think like me, who want the facts to come in, who want the checkable facts to come in, see what's what happened, what didn't happen, and they're not going to let mob hysteria dictate what they do. And uh, I think you're going to, I think you're going to get a fair trial down there. We believe we will. I uh, also acknowledge the Orange County situation. We've lived there before, um, and. It, 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 it is, but it's hard for the people of Fullerton, for example, that their department has been maligned and nothing has you know, been coming out. But now, hopefully, it will come out. It will come out as it came out last night that the officers, uh, the department, did not try to cover anything up. They tried to do, the officers tried to do what they were trained to do and so forth. So at least we're on that path of at least uh, refuting, if you will, or, or affirming I really wish you look at it. That that situation is what it is factually, as you so eloquently said, leading into our conversation. All right, I'm very late for a break here. Thanks so much for yes. stopping by. I really appreciate it. I know it's been very hard for you, and uh, just want to thank you. We thank you, sir. You All right, John Hulsman, stepfather of Fullerton police officer Jay Cicinelli, eight hundred two 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 five two 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 one eight hundred two 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 five two 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 is my telephone number. The report is in the city of Fullerton. The police department was telling the truth concerning the facts of the Kelly Thomas case. That's what independent investigator Michael Janaco told the council last night. Your chance to respond. 800-222-5222. 1-800-222-5222. This is the Larry Elder Show with me, John Phillips. Talk Radio 790 KBC. It's John Phillips in for Larry Elder. The LAUSD has a new child molesting teacher. Oh, wait, let me do that over again. The LAUSD has a new <coughs> alleged child molesting teacher that has fled to Mexico. Those details after the news at four. The National Enquirer has a picture of Whitney Houston in the casket. I'm on the radio in Los Angeles at 342 in the afternoon. I'm not touching that one with a 10-foot pole. 800-222-5222. Let's begin with Don in Orange County. Don, you're on KBC with John Phillips in for Larry. Hi, John. Listen, I am thrilled to be able to hear you on this radio today talking about those Fullerton officers and the raw deal that they got. I'm a retired uh, police sergeant from Orange County, and I am fed up with law enforcement telling, you know, officers and, you know, witnesses, you can't say anything, you got to keep your mouth shut. You know, that's ridiculous. In today's, in today's time, with how the media it just spreads everything, so whether it's factual or not, you got to speak out and defend your guys. As far as that chief from Fullerton, that will be fired. He was a coward. He runs off on some kind of fake disability. But, you know, the biggest fraud of them all was this boy's father. You know, first of all, he lets people believe he's a retired sheriff from Orange County. That's not the case. Guy was fired. He couldn't hack it on Orange County, so he was fired. He had a beef with the, with the police. Second of all, he threw his son out of the house. He's the one that threw, gave up his, you know, the, his responsibility as a father, putting his son on the street. And then he's blaming everybody else for things that he should have been doing. You know, if it was my son that had something wrong with him, I'd, I'd move monuments to, to protect them and watch over them, you know, and sacrifice whatever needs to be sacrificed. He just throws them out. Now he's blaming everybody. Don, I, mean, I got a call on here. Mike and Marita Del Rey, who disagrees with you. Mike, say hi to Don. Hey, Don. How you doing today? I'm doing I, good. I don't know that I totally disagree with him, but, but the, the fact is a man was beaten to death there, and there's no justifying that. And, and another thing is Kelly Thomas's father is not on trial here. He has nothing to do with the case. The facts are that, that a man was beaten to death, and it's just not it's it's not acceptable for what they did to him. That's my bottom line. Don? Well, of course, and you and you think he was beaten to death. Yes, he, 
Yes, he did die, but what was the actual cause of the death? What was, the, what was actually what the coroner came out that actually caused the death? And you're right, the father was not on trial, but the father sure, you know, slanted everything and came up with lies against these officers and saying how they should be murdered and, and all this, when in fact, that's not the case. And he knew that. You know, and then you talk about, too, that not only did he, did he know what was happening, but what father comes to identify his child Bring in a camera. Come on, listen. Put some common sense to this thing. I, the finger needs to be pointed at this father, not these officers. All right, Mike. The father didn't do anything wrong here. You mean maybe maybe is truth. He's not factual. But the bottom line is, Kelly Thomas was in fine health before the cops got a hold of him. He's dead afterwards. Yeah, maybe he didn't die on the scene, but he died afterwards after they unplugged him or whatever. And they carried. They went too far. That's the bottom line. They went too far. All right. Don and Mike, thanks so much for calling in. 800-222-5222. 1-800-222-5222. More of your phone calls when we return. And LAUSD has another problem with child molesters. This one in a different school. This is not Miramonte. All those disgusting details coming up after the news at 4. This is the Larry Elder Show with me, John Phillips. Talk Radio 790 KBC. Taking your calls now at 800-222-5222. And right now, pleased to be joined by council member in the city of Fullerton and former police chief Pat McKinley. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, John. So uh, what do you make of this report that was presented to you last night? Well, I, I'm, I'm very pleased, obviously. I think it will bring uh, some closure to a lot of people to uh, know the facts, and the facts are, are what they are. As you often say, the facts are the facts. I, uh, I, I, I think one of the things it really does is that, uh, that these people, these people that are screaming and shouting, have been constantly maligning Sergeant Andrew Goodrich, who is a PIO. He did nothing but his job. He reported nothing but the facts that were given to him, and he, and if the facts that were given to him proved not to be uh, the uh, the, the, the truth or the incident, and a lot of times in these fog of, of uh, initial uh, contact, it's very difficult to get the uh, facts exactly right. When he found out the truth, he put it out there. He did everything right, and these people are just maligning him right and left, and I'm really pleased that this report came out and uh, I think uh, exonerated uh, Sergeant Goodrich and showed what a good man he really is. Yeah, I'm reading a book right now on the French Revolution, and you look at a mob, and you look at the dynamics of what makes a mob snap and what makes a mob operate, and it's it's shockingly similar as to what's going on down there, where facts just absolutely mean nothing, and when something that they've been saying turns out not to be true, they just move on like yesterday didn't exist. How difficult is it for you when you're sitting up there in council chambers and you're listening to them just one after another go up there and say things that have now proven to be false? They said that the picture wasn't him. That's false. They said that there was no call to the police. That's false. They said that uh, that he didn't have anything in the backpack that didn't belong to uh, that didn't that belong to somebody else, that turned out to be false. How difficult is it to just sit there and have to hear it over and over and over again when there's people that just don't know what the hell they're talking about? Yeah. John, I've got 45 years as a police officer, and this was by far, and, uh, and I did a lot of high-speed stuff, and by far this, was, this is absolutely the most difficult thing there is because you cannot respond back. You've got to listen to these people, and you know what they're doing is not, not factual. You know what they're, they're just wound up like a spring, and you can't respond back. you just got to sit there and listen to them time after time after time, and they're very insulting, extremely insulting. And, and so it, it is not easy. It is not easy. But we, the facts are the facts. And, and uh, uh, Michael Janaco, let me get to that. I really appreciate him. I've known him when he was a uh, uh, U.S. attorney. He was civil rights uh, section of the U.S. Attorney's Office. I've known him since then. Uh, incredible integrity. Uh, I think he's trying to walk a very uh, tight rope here uh, because if, if you look at that report closely, that backpack wasn't even his. He picked it up, 
Yeah. What is the what is the definition of that based on the penal code? Is that theft if you have a passport that doesn't belong to you, if you have mail that doesn't belong to US certified mail or, or mail that was mailed by the US Postal Service yeah. that does not uh, belong and, and he uh, Michael uh, kind of glossed over that. It's 485 of the penal code. Just have somebody take a look at it for you and and you can take a look at that. It's uh, it's almost misappropriation of, of property something like that. So uh it uh it, it uh, is a uh, uh, it is a crime, and, and 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 so. But of course, he's a schizophrenic. He's mentally ill, so who knows what he, what was going through his mind? But the point is, there they definitely had the cause to uh, stop him and to further their investigation. Yeah, this is uh, an interesting day. And i got to tell you this, too. Well, we're talking about the photograph, because the photograph was another point of contention here, where they said that the photograph of the Fullerton Police Department was not him, that you just found some scary guy, and you just released some random photograph. That turned out not to be true. Now, on a dime, they turn, and they're saying, well, he looked awful in that photograph, and you should have consulted with the family to try to come up with a better, I guess, maybe a glamour shot. You need hair and makeup before you can release a, a, a photograph of somebody. What is the department policy is it to release the most recent photograph if there's a freedom of information act request sure absolutely and generally and i even brought this up to michael when he uh, when he said that generally when you get a request for a booking photo uh the person's been booked i mean you know he's arrested for drunk driving or he's been arrested for robbery or something but he's in custody here's his booking photo now we used to wait till after arraignment to release those things but that's 48 hours the point here is we didn't have a booking photo and uh, and andrew is very good with the press he works extremely hard to be responsive to the press and so he goes back to the last one we had 2009 and that's the last booking photo we had and he said here it is and under as you know uh, john under the uh, uh, public information act uh, in the press uh, you can get that well, now do we want to step in front of you and make you wait 10 days to get it and do all these kind of things certainly not we want to well, I'll go one step further here, because is what you have happening is you have the media, you have the L.A. Times and other news organizations that show the picture of him with the cowboy hat from years and years and years ago. He hasn't looked like that in years. Instead of using the current picture, the picture that's the accurate picture, they purposely use something that doesn't even resemble him. Councilman Pat McKinley, former police chief in the city of Fullerton, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. And thank you, John. It is 3.59 in the afternoon. This is the Larry Elder Show with John Phillips. When we return, LAUSD is in trouble again. Another teacher.